Hello and welcome to Lacuna Festivals. Tonight's event is with Anna Bogetieva and I'm going to pass straight on over to you, Anna, so that you can introduce yourself and get us started. So, hello everyone. Uh, I'm happy to be here and present my project, Conversation with Red. And so what we will do today is take a look into the embroidery from a bit of different point of view uh, as the as the theme of uh, festival this year is clash i was thinking to present a topic which is a bit unusual and uh, we will talk about those materials that kind of clash with the traditional embroidery made on uh, made on cotton or textiles and uh, there is also a Facebook group where everyone can join and post the artworks, share it with, uh, with everyone. So it will work kind of an open space where we can share our ideas, where we can um, inspire each other. And uh, I will also present some, uh, some materials after. And we will take a look also into the albums for some inspiration. Yeah, and to introduce myself, I would like to ask to say uh, how I uh, get started with embroidery, because basically I was studying painting and uh, my story with uh, embroidery started more than three years ago. First, uh, first I was working the classical medium painting on canvas or uh, painting on aquarel paper, but uh, at the fourth year of university, I was feeling really, really stuck with painting and uh, I had kind of artistic block, which can be yeah, very challenging happens to every artist. And at that point, um, yeah, I, I felt like I can't really go on with the medium I was used to before. And I, I still had the, that urge to create something. I still wanted to do something with my hands to express myself. I really like to do crafts and work with colors, but painting just wasn't working <laughs> at that time. And that's how I started with textiles. And it was actually very random because one day, um, one day I just got some new materials from from textile store and I realized it, it's possible to find every colors also also every every um, possible material and um, yeah it was it was very liberating in a way to try out new medium and I also like mixed media artworks so for me it kind of opened up new doors and uh, it was also kind of uh, kind of a therapy to work with, with something new and uh, help me to get through my my creative block at that time um, and at the beginning i was only working on textiles i was, I was trying also some transparent materials and uh, also working with felt but uh, this idea of trying out something unusual came only now when um, this year's uh, lacuna festival actually announced this topic and so i was inspired to look around me and and try some uh, some unusual materials which uh, i'd like to present uh, but first uh, for those who never try to work with embroidery, maybe in the group will be some people who are full beginners, maybe some people already do some textile works. But for those who actually never tried this medium, I'd like to present some tools. So for the beginning, we will need the embroidery hoop. This is uh, made of wood, but sometimes we can also buy plastic ones or ones made from bamboo. And also there are different sizes. For instance, this small one, which uh, I already tried the, the, the bubble 
bubble wrap and photography can be also useful for this project. For instance, this one, where I embroidered letters, hope it's, it's visible. After the, after the workshop, I will post all these uh, experiments in the group. Yeah, and uh, it's good to start practicing. What I did is a sampler. This one is made on leave and it was quite challenging because usually these are made on classical hoop it uh, textile. So for instance, this was mine when I was just starting and I wanted to try out all the different types of embroidery, like also the, the cross stitch or something with the wool or, or the French knot. Actually, all these uh, will be in albums. And um, for those to, to start, it, there are a lot of links and tutorials. And um, as I said, the leave was more challenging as um, this material can break easily. And I was even considering should I present it or no, because uh, I like to have everything, um, everything done correctly. And, and uh, I found a lot of mistakes in this work. But then I decided to share it uh, to show people that uh, it's okay to make mistakes at the beginning, as uh, this can be can be really challenging. So I, I tried first with some some basic shapes, and also with the wool, which was a bit more difficult, as it also made some holes, and uh, with the pattern called Lazy Daisy. <laughs> which is actually simple, just uh, need to follow some basic rules and the cross stitch, again, the French knot, yeah, and all the, all the possible, even the chain stitch. You can later find this in the albums. And uh, yeah, so I don't want to see people being discouraged because probably at the beginning it won't be perfect but um, we are learning and it's important to try so this was the leaf and uh, i was also experimenting for instance with the orange peel which can be also interesting but i would recommend to to work on it while it's still still a bit uh, fresh because when it dries out it's very hard to work on it so uh, sometimes I would recommend just to look around and really find anything what what um, can be inspiring for you. And even in the kitchen, there are so many things, so many things to work with. For instance, the silver foil, which first I was thinking maybe maybe it's too difficult to work on it, but uh, then I managed to make some basic lines. It's uh, actually very good to use a black marker to draw on these materials and uh, only follow the pattern after. Yeah, and so I will show you some, some basics, basic threads I like to work with. For instance, for instance, here is the yarn. So, so the yarn is um, actually thicker as, as we saw on the leaf. But on the other, other materials, it can work quite nice. So all the different colors in special stores. So it's really like a huge palette of whole rainbow. And uh, when you enter the group, you can also see the letters, conversations with the thread, which I tried first. Actually, this was my first work made on plastic bag. So this was with the same yarn. And then, and then with, uh, with these threads, 
I was actually just experimenting how it works, but uh, it worked quite well. Yeah, so even the plastic, the idea of plastic, it's everywhere around us. And when we do artwork from it, we kind of recycle it. Yeah, so, so these embroidery threads can be found in, in all colors and are very easy to work with. Other materials, what else can we use? I found uh, this type of bubble wrap and when I tried to work with it, it was uh, also quite challenging and uh, I would recommend uh, to try to avoid the little bubbles and uh, embroider around them. And there are a lot of different types with bigger or smaller bubbles can be actually actually found in little boxes when you order something from internet and if if we need it it can be actually even fun to work with it some people uh, like to choose this material for for various crafts not only only for embroidery and uh, the next thing i found is the plastic grid and this is actually very, very useful for the cross stitch. Maybe some people only try the cross stitch. Maybe uh, this is more common among the stitchers. For me, uh, it was also nice to experiment with. For instance, I tried some basic, basic shapes. For, for this type of work uh, is again good to use the yarn because it, it will cover all the little holes and make a kind of nice result. And I made something also, especially for the festivals. And is this work, which shows the, the letters of today, of this year's, this year's festival theme. So I think I will also post this later in the group. And yeah, I would uh, encourage people to try out uh, some cross stitch and uh, so many possibilities. I was uh, kind of just exploring what we can work with when we want to transfer, transfer or sketch. Uh, it's good to use the tracing paper, which is transparent like this. So for instance, I made, made a drawing directly on it and uh, then we can transfer it either on the plastic or any material that we use. Normally, normally it's textile. And we also need a carbon paper. Carbon paper like this. And it helps us to transfer the pattern very easily on the material we will use. Yeah, these, these things are actually easy to get in any store and uh, help us to proceed with the work faster and even get better results. Like uh, in the case of the photograph, here I transfer the letters and then I embroidered them. Then I would like to show you different types of the needles. For instance, these ones I like to use with the yarn. Because they are, they are bigger and also for the, for the cross stitch, I work with this type of the needles. If we want to achieve um, this, this type of result, I would suggest to use the smaller needles that, uh, that are finer and we can, for instance, use these, these threads 
it with the small needles here. Yeah. Yeah, so at this point, I think I, I showed all the things that I wanted to. And uh, maybe maybe we could proceed to the albums that uh, I would like to show some inspiration. Can and... I interrupt you very briefly, Anna? Because I have a question. Yes. I, your embroidery on photographs is beautiful and Thank this you. is something that i have tried to do myself and i end up creasing and crinkling the photograph so it gets damaged mm -hmm. how do you protect the surface that you're working on well actually uh what helped me maybe i can also show it from the other side is that i made little holes with the needle first I followed the shape of the letters and it helped me to, to achieve better result because, uh, yeah, I know what you mean. It's um, actually quite difficult because paper can break so easily. And um, so I took the little needle and I just followed the shape of the letter and the later I, I could continue with the thread. Thank you so much. That sounds so simple and obvious when you say it, but I have not thought about it. <laughs> it is indeed challenging. For instance, um, some materials like the bubble wrap for me, I think is the most challenging <laughs> because I really have to be careful to, to avoid um, some parts where there are the bubbles and it, it breaks so easily. <laughs> so even when I put it on the hoop directly, it can it can change so easily and we have to i think uh, work very slowly with these materials even with the leaf it can be actually what i like on embroidery uh, it's also kind of a meditation for me because it requires a lot of concentration and we have to work slowly follow the shape it's easy to make make mistakes then yeah with uh, with textile it's easier to repair it but when it's on the leaf then it's not possible to repair it or even with the plastic when it it breaks then yeah the whole artwork is done <laughs> so so yeah that's why i wanted to show also my mistakes so people won't be discouraged but uh, also the process is important, not only the result. And yeah, it's very important to, to start and don't be scared if, if we fail at the first time. <laughs> Thank you so much for answering my question. I'm gonna go back on mute and let you um, share your albums of inspiration. Yeah, so I think I should start to share my screen at this point. Can you see it? Maybe is it good? Yes, we can see that. That's great. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, so this is the album I made for the participants. I started making a little collection, and it was amazing to see what what artists can do with embroidery. Contemporary embroidery is uh, amazing, I think, and. Uh, just to start with, oh, I'm sorry, maybe there is a little noise around in the street. <laughs> yes, yeah, so for instance, this artist, uh, she's working with, with uh, very unusual materials. In this case, it's a tin can and she embroidered it with a cross stitch. And uh, I was thinking how was she working with this and uh, she had to make first the holes and then continue the pattern. Like in this case, just part of the car, I think it's amazing. And what I like about this is also that she 
uh, use kind of a traditional pattern and uh, the materials is something very contemporary something unusual so what she finds objects that are maybe thrown away and she gives another life to them and uh, this artist was working with uh, with x-ray and embroidering with color so it makes us very nice contrast something old and something new like this head of the minotaur <laughs> Uh, for me, I think this is my favorite. So I don't know what you think about these works, or uh, if you if you prefer some more traditional materials, or you can relate to these. When I was looking at these, I particularly enjoyed um, the X-ray ones, and also there was one that I really liked that said "peace," just really really big i think that was a photograph or a postcard perhaps i know which one yeah i think we will, we will get there oh and these ones with the rackets that's so clever yeah so this is very original i love it yeah so colorful and um, interesting is that uh, she doesn't uh, use the cross stitch despite she would have a possibility, but she kind of built up the the whole artwork with a lot of thread. The color use is really interesting as well, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, for me, it's, uh, it's very special. And this one, yeah, I, uh, I found this a bit unusual because uh, this artist, he was working with the thread on his hand, directly on his palm. <laughs> and uh, I never tried this, but they say that actually it's possible and it, it's uh, possible to do it without hurt because there is kind of a dead skin on top of our hand. I totally thought that this was a photograph and that it was sewn into on the photograph. I did not appreciate that this person had sewn into their skin. Yeah, yeah, it is uh, very unusual as well. <laughs> and for instance, uh, this is more like a street art. This artwork, the artist, she follows cross stitch patterns traditional flower patterns that uh, that are made made like for decorations in rooms and translates them in contemporary art language in this way but i would love to see also in town where i live and i think she used this type of materials just with bigger holes these are small but uh, what she works with must be at least three or even bigger. This reminds me a little bit of artists who use mosaic techniques to fill potholes around towns. You know, this kind of using a traditional craft in a really interesting contemporary way. Yeah, it could be also interesting maybe to post some of these artists because um, yeah, I would be happy to see also what is inspiring for other people. So if you if you'd like to, you can also share it in the group. Yeah, sure, not a problem. Yeah, it can be even broader, not only about embroidery, but also uh, other topics that are close to contemporary embroidery. Yeah, or or this one when when they just find something in the kitchen, something they don't use anymore and give it a new life or a chair. Again, the cross stitch. Yeah, I also shared actually an album which shows the basic types of stitches like um, yeah, chain stitch, back stitch, French knot and others. So people will find it and hopefully it will make their work easier. 
Yeah, or this one with the photograph. I was thinking how she actually made this happen. And I think this artist, she also had to make little holes. And then after, just continue with the thread. Otherwise, it would be very difficult. Yeah, yeah so I love these. They're just, again, I'm a bit of a sucker for the contrast between color and either sepia or black and white. So these ones I was really drawn to. Yeah, I really like this. And uh, also the idea to take an old photograph and give it a new life is also very, very nice. We also had one project a few years ago when I found an old album on the street and then I made collage out of the pictures. So taking something uh, vintage and transforming it to contemporary is a um, very interesting topic for me. Yeah, or, or this one. Yeah, and I was wondering also how how she did this and maybe maybe that's the postcard that you liked and you mentioned yes this one i think this is absolutely gorgeous yeah so the type of the of the stitch that the artist use is called chain stitch and this one actually also worked well when i tried with the leaf so that's the chain stitch for instance on the leaf and in, on the paper, it also works quite good. Yeah, this one is also beautiful. And yeah, yeah, these are just, yeah, these are totally me. I really like text and images, you know, it's something that's kind of happening more and more in my own artwork. Yeah, the, the lettering can be very interesting, especially with the embroidery. You choose colors and and just just do something spontaneous or it can be even maybe some message in the postcard message in the work itself yeah so many approaches more abstract uh, this one makes me feel really really like summer and happiness <laughs> i love palm trees i love sun that yeah, one's just, quite Lanzarote, you know? Like, it just, yeah, it kind of speaks of Lanzarote because... This one? Yes, if you have a look online, the kind of official logo for Lanzarote that was designed by Cesar Manrique is based on a sun, and palm trees are everywhere here, all different types of palm trees. And so this could quite easily have been taken somewhere here. Yeah, it's so interesting. Also, uh, I currently live in Spain. I did at the beginning in uh, Malaga, so I, I really love this nature, it's so different than my country, it's just the opposite, because at home we don't have this type of vegetation and for me it's very exotic, for me it's like uh, at certain parts of the town I feel like it's a big botanic garden. <laughs> Yeah. For me too, coming from England, it's very different in Lanzarote. Yeah, it must be also for you completely different, I guess. Yeah. And, so uh, what are you hoping that people are going to do with all it? Because you have really, really prepared so much information in terms of these inspirational images, but also those sort of tutorial style um, images that you put up as well. Yeah. What do you hope that people are going to do with all of this? Well, for me, it's, uh, this album serves more like inspiration to start somewhere because I also like to do my little research before, before I start any project. So it's kind of a starting point for people. And I would like to see people maybe get some interest and start to work with embroidery and yeah this is more like something experimental 
because for me these materials are all very new. I never worked on an orange peel. I never worked on a on a leaf. And um, yeah, it, it could a little bit to broaden the horizons for everyone. And uh, what I expect from participants, well, I'd like to see them just to look around to find something unusual and try to do something with it. And it's actually very open. Um, it can be some lettering, like we see on this picture, it can be some abstract shapes like I tried with the leaves or um, find some interesting cross stitch pattern and put it on, put it on, on the plastic grid. <laughs> Or maybe someone will come up with special idea that uh, I don't have on my mind. Yeah, and um, since the group is uh, kind of an online gallery, I would encourage everyone to share something. And it really doesn't have to be perfect. It's, uh, it's an experimental space, so no pressure to, to make something here. Something, yeah. Perfect because me, I make also faults. I make mistakes, <laughs> even if I work with embroidery more than three years, we are still learning. Yeah, but uh, so shortly, that's the purpose of the group and of the project. I think it sounds really inspiring. And you were saying that the theme clash inspired you and I feel like after um, listening to your presentation of this project like I, I want to go and do this right now because you have given so many different options and so many ideas and I I want to try them for myself and see what it's like and kind of get a feel for it myself um, and I think that that will resonate with a lot of the artists involved in the festivals so thank you so much for putting so much time and effort into this project because I think it's awesome. <laughs> thank you. It's so good to hear because uh, I never did actually anything like this. Well, at university we had to present online and do our projects, but uh, not kind of a workshop like this. And it also enriched me in many ways. Ah, that's really interesting because you come across as so professional. I thought that maybe you did this all the time. No, actually online, never. Ah, wow. Like well, this. congratulations. Well, thank you. I would like to keep on working with people and doing workshops in future. So for me also, this um, presentation was, uh, was kind of a start or I would like to also see if there will be if people will be interested, if it's a good way, if it, uh, yeah, if it will bring some new insight. And uh, my next goal is also to do some live workshops, possibly. And uh, yeah, it could be maybe even more interesting to see people directly how they work and, uh, and share thoughts together. That sounds like it could be a plan for next year. Start thinking about doing some funding applications so that you can come to Lanzarote and do some workshops. Yeah, why not? Sounds great. Yeah. Do something like this or, or different topic or let's see how things go next year. And yeah, I would be open to do something live. Yeah, that sounds great. And is there anything else that you want to um, share as part of the presentation? of um, this project this year before we sign off on this presentation? Uh, well, I would like to keep on going with, with the rest of the pictures and then also show the album with the basic stitches. And yeah, maybe that's it. Uh, okay, yeah. great. Yeah. So I think I will keep on going with the pictures. And uh, yeah, during my little research, I also find some unusual approaches. For instance, this artist uh, working with, with the medium of, of embroidery in a way that it's kind of an object. 
how she works with the flower and this art is uh, actually from my country and I found it also very interesting what she did with the with the bread yeah the flowers again and the old postcards yeah and the books maybe some participants will find an old book some some antique magazines old newspapers and uh, keep on working with them yeah indeed it's very open i don't like to to put people in in some kind of box and tell them you have to do this or that for the workshop uh, i'd like them to bring something new something unique what they are not what i tell them and in this case, uh, again, the bubble wrap, I found it very interesting. I was actually working, uh, it could be a nice project to do a self-portrait. Maybe participants would like to do a self-portrait on a material which are, they are drawn to. Like this artist, even do something like street art. People can even take it outside to a public space. Yeah, and uh, this one was made on leaves and uh, she's obviously a professional. And um, she must work with the tiniest needle, with the tiniest thread. <laughs> and um, she must work, I think, think very, very long on these details. It's amazing. I wonder how well they last because leaves get very brittle, don't they, as they dry? Mm -hmm. That's what happened to me also. What I wanted to also show is uh, this leaf was, was basically green. <laughs> and uh, yeah, they change color so fast. So I would also suggest that maybe it's good to put them below a heavy book. Mm -hmm. to keep them straight I don't know how these artists keep the leaves nice and green maybe it also maybe she put them in heavy books or something like that it would be good to try it for me for me these leaves got got dry too fast <laughs> yeah so um in dry leaves it's impossible to work because they break it has to be more or less fresh the same as the orange peel and all the organic materials so also paper this artist she works in paper and combines it in a lot of abstract shapes for the beginning also abstract shapes could be could be an interesting topic it's easier than do something complicated something concrete i don't know the level of the people who want to take part in this in this challenge so that's why it's, it's good to show different possibilities you're even working in in nature i think this is amazing that absolutely blows my mind i have no idea how that is done yeah, it's, uh, I've never seen anything like this also before my research. So while I was collecting these pictures, I was very often amazed. Because yeah, before I only followed some artists who were on textile. And then I found out there are so many possibilities. Yeah, so. Yeah. Again, the paper or the wood. Yeah, and uh, again, working on the old photographs. I also, also like this approach. Yeah, this is really interesting doing the color, the color comparison. It reminds me of those strips that you get in um, DIY stores where you're kind of choosing all of the different shades. Of oh, I know what you mean, yeah. Yeah, these are so nice, like a little catalogue of colours. Yeah. 
need to see them the same i think this album we we have seen everything we have seen everything and and let's see let's see the other one but people will later we later find out and make little research on themselves. Yeah, and I also also shared some pictures from the history, so we can compare how big uh, difference is with something traditional, like these samples. For instance, historical embroidery samples, 17th century. Everything was on textile or leather. Some fragments covers of the books even I think these are the sorts of things that people think about when they think about embroidery I don't think that they imagine you know the kind of things that you're showing as possibilities yeah yeah this is this is more like a stereotype what people really have in their head as you say it's uh what what we what we see in museums galleries or in households yeah and uh, yeah it requires actually a lot of creativity to do something like the opposite or something what we never seen before like this one from 1500 or or this tapestry from 11th century so that's what we are used to and uh the other things kind of literally clash with the traditional point of view. Yeah, and uh, the last thing that I'd like to share is uh, this album of the basic stitches for people who are just starting or also for those who want to learn something new. It's uh, good to practice first, as I did on the leave and to explore the material. For instance, me, I like to use the basic running stitch or back stitch. Chain stitch could be also very interesting. And yeah, the daisy on the, or the star, it's actually very playful. The embroidery can be very, very play, playful and colorful. And yeah, me, I, I really like embroidery in general. Or, yeah, lettering, how to do some letters. Yeah, so I think from my side, this uh, this was everything for today. I don't know if uh, you have any questions or what do you think would be necessary to say? I think um, if people start on this project, and they want to share their progress or they want to ask a question is the best way to do that in this Facebook group. Yeah, definitely. It's, uh, it, it's open to everyone or even they can text me and ask me if they want to discuss something and I will try to help. Okay. So I yeah. can make sure that this um, Facebook group is shared again on the festivals page and that we get the link up over social media. Um, and yeah, and hopefully then we will see lots of artists getting involved with this and see people starting to explore this clash between this really traditional um, medium or technique with these kind of really contemporary and unusual materials i'm really excited to see what people bring you know because you've given them a lot to work with anna so i think that we could get some really good stuff yeah i, I hope it will be a good beginning maybe some people who never worked with embroidery before will just start or or they will start do something completely different than i than they did before yeah or maybe some people will just take a look and I feel inspired and uh, yeah, yeah, it's really, really open and I hope it will, it will actually be very interesting for, for a big group of people.
Okay, well, thank you so much for this presentation, Anna. I look forward to sharing it with everybody and catching up with what everybody um, does with it.